Long ago, a handsome hero saved a helpless little girl. With tears in her eyes, she begged him not to leave her. However, instead of staying, the hero assured her they would see each other again. He even promised they would travel the land together when she grew up to be a big and strong warrior. That day, the little girl learned what true love is, and soon after, she started bodybuilding. Nothing was too rigorous for the sake of her hero. Then, after years and months of hard work, she matured and joined his party as she had always dreamed. There are four of them in the group, hero, mage, priest, and the now grown-up warrior woman. As such, their opponent for today is a ferocious dragon. The party bravely confronted the beast, standing their ground against its immense power. They combine their skills to defeat it. However, mage eventually gets hurt. Not to worry, though, because warrior woman is here to save the day. She brandishes her sword, uses one of her signature moves, Iron Maiden, and in one fell swoop, strikes the dragon. The impact is so strong that it triggers an explosion that shakes the whole place. Looks like all that bodybuilding paid off. Immediately after that, Warrior Woman looks at Hero to boast about her amazing feat. But much to her disappointment, he's busy tending to the injured mage. Why must he ignore her all the time? Not only that, but he says he'll rub some herbs on her legs too. Thankfully, Priest volunteers to take over in treating mage. Touching a girl so nonchalantly isn't right after all. Now, going back to Warrior Woman. She just defeated a dragon, yet Hero is ignoring her. So what does she do to get his attention? She approaches a cliff, punches it, and waits for a boulder to land on her. With blood trickling down her head, she cutely says, Ow, that hurt. Those rocks fell all of a sudden. Okay, can someone please give this girl an Oscar? She looks like she'll die of blood loss any moment, so the girls immediately rush to check on her. Priest is about to heal her when Hero suddenly stops her, saying Warrior Woman has a lot of HP left. That said, it'll be best if Priest saves her HP in case they run into trouble. You see, their HP is as follows. Hero has 714, Mage has 203, Priest has 343, while Warrior Woman has a staggering 2010 HP. And if you look at this chart right here, her level is the highest among them too. In fact, she's already starting to heal. At the inn that evening, Warrior Woman thinks of ways to weaken herself. The only problem is, if she gets weak, she cannot be with Hero anymore. Why must things come to this? Her only option now is to weaponize her womanly charms. She then remembers seeing Priest rubbing some beauty cream on her face to make her skin prettier. That's it. Warrior Woman doesn't have any skincare products, but thankfully she has something similar. A slime. She just knows that this jiggly fella is going to make her skin beautiful and glowing. Hero will definitely fall head over heels for her, and before she knows it, he'll ask her hand in marriage. However, before any of that happens, the terrified slime runs for its dear life, and though Warrior Woman catches it, it slips by her hand and dives inside her shirt. With that, she lets out a piercing scream that alerts Hero. Warrior Woman desperately tries to get it off her, but the slime hits the jackpot when it dives into her unmentionables. What's worse, it finds a snug hiding spot, and it gets excited and even dances in it. At this point, Warrior Woman's strength is leaving her. And, uh, she's kind of getting bow chica bow wow over a freaking slime. Skill issue, I'd say. She tries her best to resist the urge, yet her body isn't listening. At this rate, the stupid slime will have its way with her until she dies. But what can she do? Fortunately, Hero arrives seconds later. As for Warrior Woman, she is about to pass out from the fatigue, but even so, as he checks on her, she remembers the warm feeling he made her feel years ago. One day, one day, she'll tell him how she truly feels. When Warrior Woman opens her eyes, she's greeted by the handsome face of Hero. He assures her that things are okay now and that the slime is dead. Warrior Woman doesn't care about that, though. Instead, she goes in for a kiss, while the heroes just all smiles at her. She inches closer and closer until she remembers something important. How did he catch the slime? According to Hero, he knew where the slime was since she was squirming around. So he does the only logical thing by reaching into her unmentionables and yanking the slime out from its snug hiding spot. Oh my gosh, Hero-kun. In her embarrassment, Warrior Woman smacks Jesus, Mary, Joseph, the saints, and maybe even the lambs out of the hero as she goes on her flustered spiel about how, well, there's an order to these things. 
You only do that after you know each other's feelings for sure. Baka. Unfortunately, Hiro didn't hear any of that because his HP's zero and his neck looks like a used up straw. In other words, he's dead. The slapped killed him. Luckily, they have a reliable priest who can revive him, after several, several tries. The next day, even though she doesn't have anything to do, Warrior Woman stays in the bathroom. Why? Because everyone knows it takes a while for women to get ready. She's practicing her wink in the mirror when Hero greets her a good morning. Naturally, she's perplexed and embarrassed, wondering what this guy is doing here. Without batting an eye, Hero says he was so tired last night that he mistook her room for his. They're the only ones there, so it shouldn't be a problem, right? While walking outside with the party, Warrior Woman can't help but feel sad knowing that Hero often sees her as a guy. How cruel is that? Anyway, on today's quest, the group will hunt iridescent swallowtail butterflies. Despite being insects, these butterflies are still monsters and are even poisonous. But for some reason, Warrior Woman is equipped with a net and insect cage like SpongeBob whenever he goes to the jellyfish fields. This, of course, prompts the other to think of how easygoing she is for seeing monsters as pesky bugs. The truth is, Warrior Woman brought the net because she has something else in mind. She's never been treated as a woman, so today is her one shot to make herself beautiful. Before long, the butterflies appear, and while Hero instructs the others to cut them down, Warrior Woman has a different plan. You see, the sparkling rainbow scales of these monsters are the main ingredient in the eyeshadow that's all the rage these days. Warrior Woman plans to catch two to three of them to breed them, get their scales, and doll herself up so she can marry Hero. Seems plausible, no? With that goal in mind, she turns her game face on and readies herself to catch some butterflies. She holds her net, and when the time is right, she swings to catch her prey. However, for some reason, the insect gets cut in half. She tries again, but no matter what she does, the butterflies keep on dying. She doesn't even know how she's doing it. Seeing Warrior Woman all fired up motivates Hero to try just as hard. Ain't no way he's letting her outshine him. He prepares a fiery attack, but Warrior Woman pushes him away before he can unleash it. If he burns them to a crisp, her plans to make an eyeshadow will go down the drain, and she can't let that happen. So, to make things easier, she runs ahead of the team and announces that she'll take the butterflies on solo. Unbeknownst to her, these monsters have a big nest ahead, and their scales can cause paralysis and stupor. Soon, Warrior Woman sees a swarm of the iridescent swallowtail butterflies. With his much around, she should be able to catch at least one. But before she can do that, Warrior Woman suddenly feels hot, prompting her to take off her armor. Before long, she's clad in nothing but her undies. She panics that someone might see her, but that thought is buried when she realizes that there's something wrong with her body. Hero mentioned something about these monsters being poisonous, so is that what this is? Did she inhale too many scales? Not long after, the iridescent queen appears. This beast needs nutrients to lay eggs, and in this case, those nutrients will come in the form of Warrior Woman. Thankfully, Hero arrives to save her just in time before she turns into a monster munch. With his signature attack, he annihilates the queen and its minions. Warrior Woman can only blush as Hero carries her princess style. He then looks at her and reminds her that despite her indomitable strength, things can still go awry, so it's best she limits her ventures alone. They're a team, so they must work together. After that, he asks if he can put her down because his arms are ready to fall off from her weight. Boy, why must you ruin such a sweet moment? So with a punch, Warrior Woman shouts, Well, sorry for being such a fatty. Before meeting Hero, Warrior Woman had no idea that love would be so painful. Her love for him grows stronger with each passing day, so much so that she can hardly breathe. As she plucks the petals of a carnivorous rose, she wonders whether he loves her or he loves her not. You see, Warrior Woman joined this party ages ago, yet she hasn't made any progress with her relationship with Hero. She doesn't think she's the problem, though. It's not as if she lacks feminine charm. It's Hero. All the guy thinks about is adventuring. He doesn't seem to be interested in romance at all. Anyway, for today, the group's target is a band of thieves. According to Mage, those goons possess a piece of legendary class gear called the Gown of Ultimate Lady Hala. 
As the name suggests, it belonged to Saint Hala, who is also called the Ultimate Lady. The gown is a part of what's known as the Hola series. In addition, it's a cute item and even has a rare attribute. Apparently, anyone who looks at it gets utterly smitten. Obviously, the gown piques Warrior Woman's interest. If she wears that gown, Hero might just kiss her. And so, Warrior Woman sets off to find the thieves' hideout. If that gown really is a legendary class item, Hero won't be able to resist her if she wears it. He'll definitely fall in love with her, then everything else will click into place. She can practically hear the wedding bells ringing. Before long, Warrior Woman arrives in the thieves' hideout. They try to intimidate her with their big, manly voices, but she doesn't flinch. Instead, she tells them to shut the hell up because she's in a hurry. She has to get her hands on that gown before the other girls do, after all. With that, she orders the now-scared men to call out all their men and their boss. Not wanting to die, the goons oblige. Minutes later, the boss arrives and fights off Warrior Woman. It actually isn't really much of a fight because she knocks them all out in an instant. Either way, Warrior Woman asks the men to give her the legendary accessory they have. However, instead of giving her the gown, they hand her the precious x Kaiser sword. Yeah, like she even needs that. She's here for the gown and the gown alone. To ease her rage, the men lead her to the boss's room, where they keep all the chests that contain different kinds of garments. The only problem is they don't know which one has the gown. Thankfully, there's a full-length mirror and a curtain, meaning she can try on the clothes. As such, she asks the men to wait for her as she prepares for a fashion show. The men, of course, have no choice but to agree. Honestly, though, they don't know what a fashion show is. Warrior Woman's plan is simple. She doesn't know what the gown looks like, so she'll put the clothes on, show it to the men, and see if it'll have an effect on them. Now, it's time for the fashion show. For her first ensemble, Warrior Woman dons a cute martial artist's outfit. After the clapping, she asks the terrified men for their feedback. Stupendous! What strength! You're so buff! Warrior Woman doesn't take that last comment well, so she punches the boss for it. But between you and me, it wasn't the boss who said that. Nonetheless, Warrior Woman continues wearing different outfits, such as a leopard two-piece, devil bodysuit, and pop star costume. Though the clothes vary, all the men comment on is how Warrior Woman looks wild, muscular, and diabolically powerful wearing them. Eventually, she wears the last outfit, and judging by the looks of the men, it's the gown she's looking for. Soon after, the party arrives in the thieves' hideout. Warrior Woman, clad in Lady Hala's gown, calls Hero and wink at him. Do you like it? Are you charmed? Warrior Woman is twirling, showing off her dress when Priest reveals that the gown's effects only work on enemies. But let's hear what Hero thinks. He says the dress has a certain charm, and isn't that bad. Its defense is inferior to her usual armor, but she should be fine since she's strong regardless of whatever she wears. This, of course, infuriates Warrior Woman. Now she has an army of thieves who are head over heels for her. After defeating a massive beast, the party takes a break to enjoy their lunch. Mage had prepared the food for everyone, and boy, it's as delicious as it is nutritious. The others compliment her for her cooking skills, but she shyly says anyone can do the same. Cooking is an essential skill, after all. I see. In that case, Mage, I'm sure you'll make a great wife, Hero comments. Mage practically short circuits at the comment. Warrior Woman, on the other hand, panics, since she hasn't cooked a thing in her life. She asks Hero if he likes women who can cook, to which he says he appreciates any good cook, regardless of their gender. The moment he says that, Warrior Woman takes off with tears in her eyes. She finally stops running when she reaches a tree in the forest. Not only does she not know how to cook, but she has a rival who makes delicious food. At this rate, she'll never get to marry him. Warrior Woman is not one to back away from a challenge, though. She needs to learn how to cook so she can be the perfect marriage material. With this resolve in mind, she gathers mushrooms from the forest. Some of these are poisonous, but they should be fine once they're cooked, right? Damn, if only these mushrooms were big and juicy, then she could cook something more impressive. Just then, a giant killer mushroom appeared behind her. Whoa, are the gods listening to her plea? After butchering the killer fungus, Warrior Woman heads to different places to gather more ingredients, such as wyvern's egg, mandrill liver, and so much more. With these, she can finally cook something that'll elevate her status to marriage material. As soon as she heads back to the inn, Warrior Woman makes curry rice for her party. However, its appearance is straight out of a horror movie. First of all, it's neon. Second, it has a pungent smell that'll knock anyone out. And third, it looks like it's possessed by an otherworldly spirit. Even Mage's puke looks more like a curry than whatever this is. 
In the end, Hero is the only one who eats the food. But as soon as he swallows it, blood gushes out of every hole in his body. Hero was poisoned. Meanwhile, Warrior Woman is in shambles. But, but she ate her food and she's fine. Oh, honey, please understand that you're a total beast. The next day, he proves just how much of a good guy he is as he looks forward to another batch of Warrior Woman's cooking. After some time, Hero decides for the party to take the next three days off. Of course, Warrior Woman doesn't let this opportunity pass up. She's definitely going to ask him on a date. Later that night, Warrior Woman heads to Priest's room and asks her ideas about where she'd want to go if she were to go on a date. This girl is smart, so whatever she says is Bible. Priest thinks long and hard, then says the first thing she'd do is dress as a farm girl. And because setting the right tone is important, she'd have her date play the ruffian. He'd spot her toiling in the field, then his gaze would turn lewd, and he'd take her to the shed. Uh, okay. Just then, Mage comes in to join the girl talk and share her thoughts. She says she'll wear a cute dress, and with her date, they'd go shopping, hit up a trendy cafe, see a fortune teller, and so much more. At this point, Warrior Woman's head is about to burst from the girl's ideas. So she bids the girls goodnight and heads out, where she stumbles upon Hero. Right off the bat, he notices that she seems anxious, so he asks if she has something to say. But instead of answering right away, Warrior Woman stares at Hero's face. It's hard being up front when you're talking to someone so handsome. Eventually, though, she musters the courage and asks him if he'd want to explore the town with her tomorrow. Much to her surprise, he agrees right away. As for the outfit, he says he likes her when she wears her armor. That last bit causes Warrior Woman's brain to go haywire. Did this obtuse guy just tell her he likes her in armor? Like? This is all too much for Warrior Woman. So instead of showing him her embarrassed state, she breaks the wall and runs outside, thinking she could die a happy woman right now. Soon she'll be walking down the aisle. The next day, Warrior Woman's excitement dies down, because instead of going on a romantic date, the two of them spend hours fixing the inn's wall. Is this a perfect date? Hell no. But could this be the start of something new? Yes, who knows? Maybe the next house they'd fix together is their own. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.